Hi and welcome Booktube. My name is Rainer. This is Rainer Books, a German's channel in Sweden talking about books in English. And today I want to present you the books of the month of July of 2021, the six books that I found very interesting to me and maybe interesting to you. So let's get started. Before I start talking about the six books, I have to say one thing. I've hit 500 subscribers. Yay! That's incredible. It went came so fast. The last month was really successful. And uh, I thank all of you and each and every one out here, out there, and around the world for subscribing to my channel. And thanks for coming back. But now I want to present you more content and let's start with the six books for the month of July. The first book is a book that everybody seems to be talking about. Every outlet on booktube there are people talking about it and the um, plot reminds me a little bit of novels that I've read and movies that I've seen. So this is, um, this is Intimacies by Katie Kitamura published in the United States by Riverhead Books on July 21, I say in the United States, because I think in the UK this book will be published in August, which is now, or today's August the 2nd, but on August the 5th. So some of the books are already published in the US and will be published in the UK in the beginning of August. The story of Katie Kitamura's intimacies, and please, if you recognize something in that plot, comment down below where what similarities do you find an interpreter has come to the hague to escape new york and work at the international court a woman of many languages and identities she's looking for a place to finally call home she's drawn into simmering personal dramas her lover Aja adrian that's a dutch name with two a's three a's actually is separated from his wife but still entangled in his marriage her friend Jana witnesses a seemingly random act of violence, a crime the interpreter becomes increasingly obsessed with as she befriends the victim's sister. And she's pulled into an explosive political controversy when she's asked to interpret for a former president accused of war crimes. A woman of quiet passion, she confronts power, love and violence, both in her personal intimacies and in her work at the court. She is soon pushed to the precipice where betrayal and heartbreak threaten to overwhelm her, forcing her to decide what she wants from her life. Interesting story, I think, set in The Hague, which is very interesting in the Netherlands. I've been to the Netherlands quite often, not so often to The Hague, but I've been to Amsterdam and Rotterdam and other places, and Venlo and Roermond grew up in the area, more or less on the other side of the border. Um, number two of the six books that I recommend for July, What Strange Paradise by Omar El Akkad. More bodies have washed up on the shores of a small island. Another overfilled, ill-equipped, dilapidated ship has sunk under the weight of its too many passengers. Syrians, Ethiopians, Egyptians, Lebanese, Palestinians, all of them desperate to escape untenable lives back in their homelands. But miraculously, someone has survived the passage. Nine-year-old Amir, a Syrian boy who is soon rescued by Vanna. Vanna is a teenage girl who, despite being native to the island, experiences her own sense of homelessness in a place and among people she has come to disdain. And though Vanna and Amir are complete strangers, though they don't speak a common language, Vanna is determined to do whatever it takes to save the boy. In alternating chapters, we learn about Amir's life and how he came to be on the boat, and we follow him and the girl as they make their way towards safety. What strange paradise is the story of two children finding their way through a hostile world. But it's also a story of empathy and indifference, of hope and despair, and about the way each of those things can blind us to reality. The next one I'm very proud of is a graphic novel, but it's a graphic novel that is actually also mentioned here, there, and almost everywhere. This is CQ, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Rotka. 
There's a silent epidemic in America, loneliness. Shameful to talk about and often misunderstood. Loneliness is everywhere, from the most major of metropolises to the smallest of towns. In CQ, Kristen Ratke's wide-ranging exploration of our inner lives and public selves, Ratke digs into the ways in which we attempt to feel closer to one another and the distance that remains. Through the lenses of gender and violence, technology and art, Ratke ushers us through a history of loneliness and longing and shares what feels impossible to share. Ranging from the invention of the laugh track to the rise of Instagram, the bootstrap pulling cowboy to the brutal experiments of Harry Harlow, Ratke investigates why we engage with each other and what we risk when we turn away. With her distinctive, emotionally charged drawings and deeply empathetic prose, Kristen Rutger masterfully shines a light on some of our most vulnerable and sublime moments and asks how we might keep the spaces between us from splitting entirely. That is surely a very interesting graphic novel. Number four on the list uh, is, is a non-fiction book. This is uh, by, uh, I think, a journalist from The Guardian called Luke Harding, and the book is called Shadow State, Murder, Mayhem and Russia's Remaking of the West, published by Guardian Faber on July the 2nd. No terrorist group has deployed a nerve agent in a civilian area or used a radioactive mini-bomb in London. The Kremlin has done both. Shadow State is a gripping investigative account of how Russia's spies help, helped elect Donald Trump, backed Brexit, murdered enemies and threatened the very basis of Western democracy. The operatives come in disguise. They pose as tourists, journalists and businessmen. Utterly ruthless, sometimes bungling and always ambitious, they roam from Salisbury to Helsinki, Ukraine to the Central African Republic, London to Washington. Shadow State is a riveting and alarming investigation into those spies and the way Russia has used them to wage an increasingly bold war in the UK and beyond. The Kremlin has attempted to reshape politics in their own mold. The future of Western democracy is at stake as a result. Interesting and necessary book. The fifth one is long listed for the Booker Prize of 2021 and it's a book that I have ordered. It's on my, somewhere on the way, hopefully, to my beautiful mailbox. And this is A Passage North by Anouk Arut Pragasam, published by Granta in the UK on July the 15th of 2021. And A Passage North is a book where we find a young man in Sri Lanka um, who is traveling north in his country. He's living in the capital of Colombo, apparently, and he has to travel north to a funeral of someone that he was close to, and his trip north, his way north, his passage north, shows him a country that is devastated by a civil war that lasted for more than 25 years. The passage North, very interesting book, and I want to have it, and it's going to come very soon. And the sixth one, the sixth novel is, is not a novel, it's a collection of short stories by an author that I read for the first time two years ago with her amazing novel, um, with her amazing novel about two sisters who are both Canadians and Canadian and American citizens, Alex Olin, and her new book is called "We Want What We Want: Stories," published by Knopf, K. Knopf and Doubleday on July the twenty-seventh. It's a yellow cover, beautiful yellow cover. I love yellow. And the more dently funny money geography youth. Vanessa arrives home from a gap year volunteering in Ghana to find that her father is engaged to her childhood's best friend. Unable to reconcile the girl she went to dances with the eighth, in the eighth grade and the woman in her father's bed, Vanessa turns to a different old friendship for her own unique diversion. In the subversive of the Brooks Brothers Guru, Amanda drives to upstate New York to rescue her gawky cousin from a cult only to discover clean-cut, well-dressed men living in a beautiful home, discussing the classics and drinking sophisticated cocktails, moving her to wonder what freedoms she might willingly trade away for a life of such elegant comfort. And in the universal particular, 
Tamar welcomes her husband's young step-cousin into their home, imagining they are saving his young woman from Somalia by the way of Stockholm, only to find their cool suburban life of potlucks and air conditioning knocked askew in ways they cannot quite understand. Populated with imperfect families, burned potential and inescapable old flames, the 13 stories in We Want What We Want are each one diamond sharp, sparkling with pain, humor and beauty. This is the new short story collection by Canadian writer Alex Olin. And that's it. That These are the six books for the month of July. August has already begun and I'm already taking a look what August might bring. So I will see you very soon with another video uh, which will be attack and attack and um, a wrap up very soon. So stay safe. Weather is bad here. It's going to rain soon. I go inside now. Stay safe. Mask up. It's necessary. Bye-bye.